So for example, we're going to make a function called Joan Jet. And what Joan Jet does is when you call her, she sings, I love rock and roll. Then she sings, put another dime in the jukebox, baby. Now I'm just doing this in a shell. I didn't actually do file new and create a script, but normally I would. But this is just to show you. I inserted a blank line and stopped defining that function. That every time I call Joan Jett, she tells me I love rock and roll, put another dime in a jukebox, baby. And I can do that over and over. I can sit there and do this for hours if it entertains me. No, I don't think I will. But you get the idea. It's a series of statements that have a name, and you invoke it by its name. So this is the function name. This is the body of the function. You create a function with the DEF keyword. Every function has to then have parentheses after the name of the function. Now, whether there's something in the parentheses or not, you get to choose. And then there's a colon. So all of this is necessary in order to define a function. The DEF keyword, the name, the parentheses, and the colon. And just like anywhere else that there's a colon, like an if statement, you have to start indenting. And everything that's indented will be part of the function. Okay, this is going to be a silly example. At least as silly as the last one. We're going to call this Rock 80s. So, my first one is Joan Jett. I love rock and roll. Everything indented is part of that function. When I stop indenting, it's no longer part of that function. Now I'm going to define a new one. Let's see, there was good old Huey Lewis. And he's going to say, we're going to add a print statement for him. Art of rock and roll. is still beating. That's about enough to prove that point. And let's do one more. Somebody name another 80s song or singer that I'll know. Don't. <laughs> Pardon me? Did I hear? Queen. Queen. Yeah, let's see. Queen had some 80s hits. Queen had Radio Gaga, from which Lady got her name, but they also did another one, Vice of Dust, and stuff like that. So we'll just go with Crazy Little Thing Called Love. There we go. So now, whenever I want to invoke them, I use their function name, followed with the parentheses. If the function is defined with parameters with things between the parentheses, you have to pass data, known as arguments, in. But Joan Jett doesn't have any parameters, so we don't have to pass any arguments in. Good thing, because I don't think she would like very many arguments. Then Huey Lewis. We will invoke Huey. And then Queen. And we can invoke these in any order we want. We can do them in reverse order. Maybe we want Joan Jett to come and make an encore. So I ran it and it said, I love rock and roll, put another dime into jukebox baby. The heart of rock and roll is still beating. Crazy little thing called love. I love rock and roll, put another dime into jukebox baby. That's the idea of functions. Now making it just print silly things is you know, obviously not really important. But the idea of functions gives you a great capability to expand your programs because you can put a whole bunch of stuff in one function. And then invoking that function can do a whole bunch of stuff. For example, our turtle. The code to actually draw that circle is probably very complicated. But they put all that in a function called circle so that we don't have to go one pixel forward and then turn an angle of one and then go one pixel forward and then turn an angle of one and so on. You know, we could draw our own circle doing that kind of stuff. Just for grins, we're going to tack on a circle drawing code down here.
let's import our turtle class. Let's make our turtle. Leo is equal to new. No, sorry, I was slipped into Java C++ there. Leo is equal to turtle with a lowercase t dot turtle with an uppercase t. And let's make him go 360 times, turning one degree at a time. So we're going to make a variable called degree, which is zero. While degree is less than 360, we're going to repeat these functions. Leo is going to go forward one pixel, and he's going to turn one degree to the right. And then we're going to add one to degree. Degree equals degree plus one. There's a shortcut of that. We could just say degree plus equals one. So that's code for drawing a circle. Yeah, it's going very slowly. But you get the idea. But they gave us a circle function. And the circle function does this, but with a specified width. You know, it does the required geometry in order to figure out what the radius would have to be. I don't know how to figure that out. If I wanted to draw a radius of a certain, you know, 200 pixels wide, I wouldn't know how to convert that into this code in order to accomplish that. I'm sure, you know, mathematically it's possible, but that would be several more lines of code. But we can just call leo.circle, parentheses 100, and poof, it already does all that. We don't have to write all these lines of code to do it. So, while we can, it's nice that they gave it to us. And it kind of shows you the, the coolness of functions is that once you get all that code written, you can reuse that function over and over and over. Once I have a function that draws a circle, or maybe I want to modify it so that it draws an oval or something. Once I have that, I can just put that into my new code, and it'll work great. Or I can import it. You can import your own functions, your own function libraries, as well as importing, you know, something that somebody else has written. How would we have sped this up? if I didn't want to wait so long. What, what should I have done? And I'm sorry, I kept talking while you were answering. Pardon? Yeah, we could do leo.speed, and the fastest we can get is zero. And we'd want to put that before we started drawing, because if we put it after we started drawing, then he'd only speed up after the race was won. Oh, that's still pretty pretty lame. Maybe it's faster than it was before. I don't remember. Okay. So that's how you define a function. DEF, the name of the function, any parameters that the function needs, and its statements. We can make up pretty much any names that we want, as long as they follow the rules for legal identifiers, which is you can't begin it with a number and there can't be any spaces, and there can't be any weirdness like percent signs or any function name. Just like with variables, you can't start a variable with a number, and there can't be any spaces in it, and there can't be any weird symbols. And by weird, I mean anything other than underscore or dollar signs. You can put any number of statements inside the function, but they all have to be indented. Once you stop indenting, it's done. Here is this text example for a draw square function. It defines the function name and it passes in, it has two parameters. One stands for turtle, we would pass Leo into this function. The other stands for size, how big of a square we are drawing. So we could add this onto our code pretty easily. Let's add this import turtle up to the very top of our code. Really, we should actually start a new program so that it wouldn't do all that Joan Jet stuff. Let's do that. Let's just do file new, new file, file new file. 
and we're going to call this functions.py because we're demonstrating functions. The first thing we want to do is import our turtle class, our turtle library. But now we're going to type in that code that they have. I could do it by memory, but I may as well look at it. So we define the function, we're going to call it draw square. For the function to work, it needs a turtle passed into it. Otherwise, it wouldn't know which turtle to move. And they're calling that T. And then it needs a size. I think SZ is a pretty lame variable name for size, so I'm actually going to make it the whole word size. Then it wants a comment. I've been starting all my comments with the hashtag. This author seems to like comments that have three quotes in front of them. Either one works. Hashtag. Make turtle T draw a square of size. Size. That's kind of stupid looking. Now I wish I'd chosen a different variable name. They're using a statement I don't think we've covered yet, which is the for statement. A for is just a while loop that counts for you. You don't have to put a condition in there. The way you read this could be read as for i is equal to 0 to 3. I know that doesn't say 3, but i starts counting at 0, and then it goes 1, and then it goes 2, and then it goes 3, and it stops when it hits 4. Now, since we haven't covered four statements yet, I wish he hadn't written it like that, so we are going to write it our own way. Let's just do i is equal to 0, and while i is less than 4, because we're going to draw four sides, our turtle is going to go forward, the specified size, t dot forward, and then it's going to turn t dot left 90 degrees. And then we're going to add 1 to i. i plus equals 1. That's a fancy way of saying i is equal to i plus 1. All right, now let's create our turtle. He likes the name Alex. So Alex is equal to turtle.turtle. .turtle. We stopped in dinning because now we're no longer in the function. And we're going to say, hey, I want to draw a square. Which turtle do I want to do it? I want Alex to do it. And I want it to be a square of size 50. All right, so I, what I want you to do, that is the same as saying i is equal to i plus 1. It's a shorter way of expressing it. If you like saying i is equal to i plus 1, that's totally cool. Both of them work. In some languages, you'll also see i plus plus, but this language doesn't have that. It means the same thing. Just add 1 to i, store it back into i. So... Add on, add another function. Called draw triangle. That draws three sides with a left angle of 120. So just copy and paste this code and change it to draw triangle. And then call it down here draw underscore triangle Alex and we want a big triangle sides of 100 so I'm gonna leave this part for you to do but you know that it's gonna start with the word def and then draw underscore triangle and then it's gonna look a lot like this except I is going to only go up to three and our angles are going to be 
120 rather than 90. So for the people who aren't typing, are you already done, or is it because you don't know how to do it? And either answer is okay, but... I'm going to go ahead and type it up here. I'm really glad that 
a lot of y'all are making good progress, and I know that some of y'all aren't finished, and I'm not trying to supersede that. It's just that if I help all 15 students, we will run out of time. to change it to 120. Now, for those of y'all who finished this like five minutes ago, think about how you would change this to a draw polygon function so that you could just pass in the number of sides and it would calculate what changes would you have to make so you pass in the number of sides and it would draw a triangle. I mean, it would draw a polygon of three sides or five sides or ten sides or whatever. Just mull that over and if you want to try it. specifying values. Another is it doesn't look like you put the code in functions. If you have a draw square function here, our draw triangle function ought to look exactly the same as this. So here's what a draw, one example of a draw triangle function.
guys some people added hexagons and pentagons and stuff that's cool but let's make one that's generic that could handle any number of sides to handle any number of sides we're gonna have to pass in another variable which indicates how many sides we would pass in a three to draw a triangle pass in a five to draw a pentagon and so on so our draw polygon has to not only has a size, but it has to have another variable, n, which indicates how many sides there are in this guy. I'm not going to add the comment. But we have to figure out the angle. And the angle for a polygon is 360 divided by the number of sides. 360 divided by 4 are 90 degree turns. And if you've already got this implemented, you don't have to change your code to match mine.
So when I invoke draw polygon, not only do I have to give them a turtle and a size, but I have to specify how many sides. So let's do a hexagon that are 75 per side. And I have a syntax error. In is not defined. Okay, that was dumb. I typed in there, and that should be actually a real number. Well, it was a mistake for me to use it here, but here I defined it as one of the parameters to the function. So not only do we pass in a turtle and then a value for the size, but we pass in a, ver a value for n. Now I'm going to draw a polygon that each side is only one pixel, but it's got 360 sides. In other words, it's a circle. And it runs very slowly, but it proves the point. Now, I can't think of much more to do with this. If you were going to go and add things to it, you might want to make them fill in the polygons or the yeah. triangles, in which case you would do T dot begin underscore fill, and at the end of it you'd do T dot end underscore fill, but that's about the only change that I can think of that would make it more fun. The underscores may be incorrect. I may have to, to remove those. Nope, they were okay. And then you could change the color before you draw each new polygon. So before I draw my hexagon, I'm gonna make Alex orange and then before I draw my circle I'm gonna make Alex aqua or cyan and of course it's going slow as molasses we should speed it up with a speed command. Alex.speed, set it speed to zero. Try to get him going as fast as possible. Still takes forever to draw the circle. The circle would look about as good if it only had 180 sides rather than 360. So I'm going to change it to 180 sides where n is equal to 180 and each side is two pixels long. It'll draw it more quickly. What if we tried 90 sides and each one had a side length of four? This is a rougher and rougher approximation of what a circle looks like, but it still looks okay.
I added this line and I added this line. 
Right, so if you want to add the thing where it fills in the colors, just tack these two lines of code into your uh, draw polygon shape. Yeah, I snuck that in there. Sorry about that. Some people caught it. A lot didn't. Okay, the author is explaining why he puts a string after the uh, creation of the function. He says that that's called a doc string and that certain uh, utilities that you use with Python would use that. So maybe I will adopt that convention once I find out how to uh, access the doc strings and make use of them. So here, this is pretty cool, but I don't think I want to type all that. But let's do use one of our functions in a loop. So I'm going to comment all of these stuff out with three double quotes. Then I'm going to go down here and do three double quotes again. That begins and it ends the comment. And then let's just write a little loop. X is equal to zero while X is less than... I don't know, how many of these guys do we want to draw? I don't know, six. Nah, 20. We're going to draw a square. Alex and each one's going to be 100. And then we're going to rotate just a little bit. Alex dot left and rotate them, I don't know. What's 360 divided by 20? I can't figure it out in my head, so I'll just make the computer figure it out. And then x is equal to x plus 1, or x plus equals 1. That's called incrementing. It takes the value of x, it adds 1 to it, and it stores back into x. It's just a shorter way of typing x is equal to x plus 1. Oh, why is it here? Because otherwise, this is a while statement. If I don't do that, then x will never change. x will always be less than 20, and so it'll go forever. Okay. Yeah. Good question. That was kind of neat. I think it's sheer luck that it came out looking that good because if I had filled in a color, then each square, no, because draw square doesn't fill in, draw polygon does. It wouldn't look as cool if we use draw polygon, but I'm going to change it to use draw polygon. Draw a polygon, Alex, each side is 100, and I want it to be made out of hexagons. And that looks kind of lousy. Whatever. I regret that change. The code to draw the square, you know, is five or six lines. But I was able to invoke it just with one call, with one word, draw square. And I can invoke it over and over and over.
has to be up here, outside of the loop. It's turning whatever 60,000 degrees is, <laughs> which just happens to be like. Well, that won't work. You can only tax in one thing for a while. But yeah. Oh. So functions can call other functions. We could have made that thing that drew the flowery looking shape its own function. And then that function would be calling draw square. So here he sh made an example. He drew a, uh, he created a function called draw rectangle. And then he made another function called draw square, which calls draw rectangle. Now we could do the same thing with ours. We don't have a draw rectangle, but we do have a polygon. And we know that the way that a polygon works is that, this is almost more trouble it than it's going to be. I'm going to cut my draw triangle function. I'm going to paste it below draw polygon. And then when we call draw triangle, all we do is turn around and call draw polygon with turtle T with that size, but we want three. And then we could make a square function or a hexagon, draw a hexagon of T size. And then we could draw a polygon with six sides like that. So now we have one function and it's invoking another function. And you can put as many layers in as you have to. There's even a style of programming called recursive programming where a function calls itself over and over and over. If I ran this code right here, it would work OK. For example, draw hexagon. I want a hexagon that is, you know, got us. Alex the turtle, and each side is 75, 76, whatever. It'll work, hopefully. Right, because once it goes in draw hexagon, it finds the draw polygon function and jumps up here and does it. But we have to kind of put them in the right order. If I moved draw hexagon up above this, then draw polygon would not be defined yet. So it would try to run draw polygon, but it doesn't know what it is yet. Now it'll actually probably run anyways, just because, okay, sorry. Forget what I said. So some functions require arguments. The ABS function stands for absolute value. If you don't pass anything in, you can't get the absolute value of it back out or the power function. Power raises two to the power of three. I'm not sure why there's a power function when there's also an asterisk asterisk, which means to the power of, but they give us one. There's another function called max. Max will take the maximum of two numbers that you pass it. 
So go back to your shell. Yeah, the shell's all messy now. Close the shell and open up a new one. Go back to one of your editor windows and do, instead of running your module, do run Python shell. And we're going to try some of those. Hope you saw that. What I did is run, and then rather than run the module, I did Python shell. Run Python shell. So I want the absolute value of 7. It's 7. The absolute value of negative 7. It's still 7. I want the maximum of 3 and 5. Cool enough. How about the maximum of negative 3 and negative 5? Well, negative 3 is larger, so it should print negative 3. Then there's another built-in function, min. I want the minimum of 10 or 12. 10, good enough. I want the minimum of 10 or negative 12. 12. Then there's that POW function, POW. 10 to the power of 2 is 100. 2 raised to the power of 10 is a much larger number that I can't predict. Huh. 124, 1024. So when you define your function, that's called the parameter. Where's my original? T is a parameter. Size is a parameter. But when you call the function, they're called arguments. Alex is the argument. 75 is the argument. Very similar meanings, and sometimes you, you know, it's, it's okay to, to mix them up when you're talking about them. But it's arguments when you're invoking the function. It's parameters when you're inside the function. So t is a parameter, but Alex is an argument. Size is a parameter, but 50 is an argument. Functions can return values, which is a good thing because otherwise all this abs and min and max and stuff wouldn't be printing anything because they wouldn't be returning anything. So I'm going to go back to my shell and I'm going to type this. DEF double parentheses X end parentheses colon. And when we call double, what we want it to return is 2 times X. And then you hit enter to put a blank line in that stops defining that function. So then if I call double 10, it's going to return 20. And if I type double 20, well, we know what it's going to return, 40. So the return keyword returns a value out of the function. Now, our draw functions didn't need to return a value because you just, you know, it draws something. It's not performing a calculation. But when you're returning a calculation, like you're calculating interest or you're calculating somebody's paycheck or bonus, you know, something like that, that's when you write a function that has a return value. If it has a return value, some people call it a fruitful function. So double here is a fruitful function. And I kind of like the word fruitful because that would mean that the other functions are fruitless, and that sounds kind of pathetic. But those are called void functions. Draw square, draw hexagon, all of those are void functions because they don't return anything. But our double function here does return something, so it is a fruitful function. And that's about enough for today, I think. We may have filled up our brains with functions. So we'll make a Dropbox.